Hi everybody, I'm just getting set up with some paint. <clears throat> everybody having a good week so far? started in a couple minutes. I know I said it was going to be a sketchbook session, but, <clears throat> excuse me, I changed my mind. I'm actually going to be reworking some small wood panels today. So these, <clears throat> excuse me, are the panels that I've had on a shelf for forever and I keep forgetting that they're here. <clears throat> excuse me, hopefully my throat will cooperate. Take some tea. So I hope you don't mind that I'm going to switch it up from my sketchbook and try to do something, well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Nothing else, I'll get some more layers on these. <clears throat> I can't, I'm on a major time lag with what's showing up on the video, so I want to make sure that's just on my end. Yeah, it seems to be. Hi, Heather, how are you? why there's such a time lag here. Heather, do you see my wood panels right now on my desk or do you see me looking at my computer? <laughs> because I'm currently in real life looking at my panels but when I look at the computer to see who's chatting and that my stuff is in frame, I see me right now adding paint to my tray, which I did a few minutes ago. So let me know what, what you see, guys, just because I want to make sure I'm talking about the things that you're seeing at the same time. All right, so while I'm waiting for feedback on that, um, I have a ton of smaller panels that I did years ago, or I started years ago, and never ended up doing anything with. So in this one, right, I even finished the edges just to see if what it looked like then. I don't mind it, but it's nothing spectacular. And my style has changed so much over the past couple years that I wanted to just finish these see what I can do. Okay, great. Thank you, Heather. I guess it's just, I'll just ignore the video. Very strange. Um, anyway, so I wanted to get some of these out from the back of my bookcase where all of my unfinished art goes to rest and then I forget about it and then I bring it out years later and it works. 
So to start out, I'm just gonna do some collaging over the top of these to make it instantly much different than it, than it was. And I've been doing a ton of work this week away from my desk, working on my website that I'm about to redo. <clears throat> so I haven't even cleaned my paint water from my last live session last week. So see how that goes. Might have some grimy water to work through. All right, Heather, remind me where you are. I think you're in the US, but I cannot remember where. And who else is on right now? See some more people, but I don't know who you are yet. Please go ahead and say hi in the chat if you can hear me, just so I know that everything's working. All right, so this paper with these tally marks is from when my six-year-olds learned how to do tally marks and they were keeping track of some sort of score of a game they made up every once in a while. Well, as much as possible. If there's some work that I'm not sentimentally attached to that they bring home or work on at home, I try to snatch it from my collage bin. Every once in a while I get caught <laughs> and my son is like, what are you doing? Don't put my math homework on there. But again, he's six, so if he does keep it, it just ends up in a crumple under his bed and then he recycles it the next week, so. Oh, I was totally wrong, Heather, sorry. Northeast of the UK, well, greetings from the US. It would be lovely to be in the UK right now. <clears throat> At least I don't know how the weather is actually, but uh, it sounds very nice right now. I've only been once, but I loved it. And I was basically in London and like the surrounding areas. So I have certainly not seen the majority of the country, but absolutely loved it. So right now, if you can see this blue showing up, on some of these collage papers just because I did not get all of the phthalo blue off of my, my uh, color shaper here. And typically it just peels off and it doesn't ever mark up again, but I don't know if it's just that phthalo blue has so much pigment in it, but it does seem to mark long after it's dry. So note to self, don't be like me. Peel it off first before you start. Okay, so the easiest thing for me to do when I'm starting to rework something is to make a big change right away. That way it disconnects me from what it used to be and makes it so that I can't go back in time. I just commit right out of the gate I'm a sentimental sap, so I often get stuck um, well, I just often get stuck, quite frankly, that's end of sentence, because I want to keep the old and add new, and that's not always possible. I would say it's usually not possible. You usually have to end one thing to start another. Such is life. One thing, I will ask you guys your opinion since you're here, uh, one thing that I was thinking about doing in one of these live sessions is to do kind of a live 
workshop with some of my process art. So that would be something that you guys could do with me. And what I mean by that <clears throat> is uh, process art is really just a way of doing art that focuses on the doing of the art, not the outcome of the art. So it's much more focused on what colors feel good to work with rather than right focusing on well, this isn't part of my normal color palette if you feel like working with brown and you never work with brown then you just kind of honor that impulse and you work with brown for that day and it doesn't have to mean anything it doesn't have to look good it's really just about feeling the feeling the feelings <laughs> that come up I guess when you when you create. It's a little bit from an art therapy background, but it's not art therapy, so I'm not going to be analyzing anybody, including myself. But it is a really relaxing way to, in my opinion, cope with life. Um, I really firmly believe that art is a self-care practice, or can be a self-care practice. And, I mean, the world is kind of a hard place to live right now in lots and lots and lots of areas and for lots of people. And I think art, <clears throat> especially process art, you do not need any fancy materials. You don't need any fancy paint. You can use crayons. You can literally go to, you know, the drugstore and get some crayons and have a blast. <clears throat> So, all right, sounds like Becky, you're potentially interested. Um, I think it would be kind of fun. So I'll give you guys advance notice when I decide to do that. And we can try it together. So it would probably be me, let, me talking less, but all of us doing more together, which I think would be a fun experiment. All right, awesome. So if you're interested, definitely comment in this video um, when, it's, when it's done, if you guys see it again. Um, or, or, and make sure you're following me on, face, on Instagram, excuse me. My Instagram is tied to my Facebook, so if you're tied, if you're on one or the other, you should get the message either way. And I will keep you guys posted. There would be nothing you need to do ahead of time except just to grab some something to make art with. So probably crayons would probably be the best thing to start with because they're so available and very easy to use. I feel like everyone knows how to use them on some level because I feel like we all, no matter where we live, use them when we were younger or something very similar. So, not paying a whole lot of attention to what I'm doing right now, per usual, and that is my goal. Becky, where are you right now? Are you in the U.S.? city. I think you were on last time. Am I remembering correctly? Are you the same Becky? Either way, it's nice to have you here. And my collage scraps here. This is an email that I had written and printed out to proofread. And then I just saved it. <laughs> it's got a Brene Brown quote on there because I love Brene Brown. And I was writing to a friend. But I just save 
bits of everything. I'm not really sure what makes it savable versus recyclable. Oh, good, Becky. It's I'm glad to have you back here. It's a little bit tricky for me to figure out a time to do this on a regular basis because I wasn't sure <laughs> when I'm typically home. But I think this time works pretty well for me. So I'll start here and I can always change things as it goes, but so far so good. couple more pieces of collage then I'm going to break out the paint really make some changes it's interesting even these super early stages of redoing things I always start to have some favorites and usually by the end my favorites have completely switched right now I like how this is coming together and how this bottom part's coming together. It's a little Christmassy up here with the red and green for me, but um, these, I just put a big piece of collage down so there's not a whole lot to look at anyway. I need something else. I think I'll wait for some paint. Okay, so uh, in my palette today, I've got some Payne's Gray, which is kind of like a navy blue, some Cobalt Black, Titan Green Pale from Golden, uh, a mixture I have of, of white and some yellow ochre, and then just some straight yellow ochre. And let's just get some color here. I never worked with anything close to yellow ochre until probably maybe a year and a half ago. I always worked with more pure colors, right? Like rainbow colors. <laughs> Probably not a shock to many of you uh, if you've seen my older work. But I'm just a sucker for rainbow colors. But I realized, kind of looking at some of Jane Davies' videos and even some of Louise Fletcher's videos, how much I liked some rainbow colors with the yellow ochres and the, um, uh, what's this called? Quinacridone gold. And how it just warms things up and it doesn't look like a kid's playground. Like a little bit of a kid's playground look, <laughs> but not fully. Oh yeah, Becky, what colors did you mix up? I keep meaning to do that, and then I don't. I do have a couple of colors mixed up. I've been using these like ketchup and mustard condiment squeeze bottles that I'll take just from the, the jar of paint. And then I'll do some mixing, but I don't have a ton of colors that I always go back to. That's totally not true. I have tons of colors I regularly go back to. I just seem to mix them in different quantities each time I go back to them. All right, I'm gonna totally take out some of these saturated colors on this one. So this already, what, it's been five minutes and that's completely, completely changed. Desaturating colors 
<clears throat> with just a little bit poking through. Something about it that's really fun. <clears throat> Sorry about my throat. I was fine <laughs> till I hit the, the go button and then my voice apparently got stage fright. really become a sucker for this celadon green color too, this titan green pale. Muted like green, red, orange, gold, orange. Yep. Sounds like a beautiful palette, Becky. I don't really like what's going on here, but experience has taught me that I will just keep waiting as the layers go and we'll do something daring on the next one. Oh yeah, the squeezing and the mixing is, yeah, <laughs> I'll give you that. My mixing is not my favorite thing to do. Um, but so often, most of my mixing, I mix a lot on my art, I think. So this is a silly little pencil my kids brought home from school and then promptly forgot about and left it in my office. Oh, all right, so here's a good moment. I did not dry this enough, the collage enough. This was with tissue paper. So the tissue paper totally just came off when I was drawing. So I'm going to repaint that a little bit and use the hair dryer for a minute. So mind your ears everybody. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, Becky, so this muted green, this is the Titan Green Pale from Golden. This is one of my all-time favorites. Can't seem to get enough of it. All right, I'm putting those aside just as a mental note for me to not touch them for a little bit because I've got some thicker paint there. But these should be okay. Okay, where's my pencil? Here it is. So the paint's a little bit wet and you can see it coming through or the pencil carving into that paint. So I'll decide later whether I like that or not. Um, this is my very wet paint. Put it on pretty thick over there. All right, do we want butterflies? No, this one needs something, this needs some black.
for a bit too. Nice thing about working on more than one thing at once is you get a little bit of time to dry. When they're tiny like this, it doesn't take very long to need to move on to the next one though, so I'm, I'll try not to rush it. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I really like all those colors mixing. Okay. My husband is currently in Florida on a business trip as there's a hurricane headed toward him. But he's in Miami, so I'm hoping that the hurricane will be very far away from him. And I'm hoping that he'll be able to get home and that the flights aren't all taken. But I do not envy anyone going through that right now. So if anyone on here is from Florida, I hope that you're safe. It's funny, I, I would assume that being from Florida, hurricanes are just something that you deal with unless it gets really bad. Because I'm from the Midwest and in, in the States, which we get lots of tornadoes coming through. And we don't really think that much of them. Well, in the Chicago suburbs, we don't think much of them because rarely do they come into the suburbs. But when they do, we just go in our basements and hang out and then go back upstairs. Luckily, we haven't had anything in this area be tragic that I'm aware of for a long time. Certainly some storms do some damage. But I would imagine it's very different when you can watch the hurricane gather speed and it's coming right at your city. That sounds pretty scary to me. Why am I trying to put more black on these? I don't know, but I keep trying to do it, so maybe I'll just do it. Sure, why not? Anybody have any personal wins to celebrate today or this week? Anything you're proud of that you want to share? I have been working on my website. Um, it has not been published yet, my new website. But behind the scenes, I've been working on it. And self-promotion is 
not something that feels natural to me. So, so making an entire website about myself uh, also does not feel natural to me. But I'm still working on it because I still need to make one. And I'm feeling proud of myself that I'm getting it done. So that's my win for the week. It's not done yet, done yet, but progress has been made. So I'm counting that as a win. All right, I'm gonna switch back to paint because I keep picking little things. Thank you, Becky. It does feel really good. Um, and actually I've been poking through my YouTube comments to pick out some, you know, some nice flattering comments that some of you guys have left. And I'll be contacting you if I potentially wanna use some of them for my site. So thank you in advance because there are a lot to choose from. You guys are very generous with your praise and I appreciate it. All right, I'm gonna go white. I'm gonna stop with the color shaper for a little bit. Let's check out these brushes that have been sitting in water since last time. Oh, two eight by eight journals. Oh, because of, oh, that's so nice to hear. Hey, I'm proud of you. That's awesome. I love the commitment. There's, there are very few things that I like more than a brand new sketchbook and a brand new journal because the possibilities are endless. In the past, I've usually stopped them well before they're complete, but I don't care. I still keep everything. So I have a huge pile of unfinished sketchbooks. Um, but for the first time ever, uh, a couple years ago, I finished like three sketchbooks. I'm very proud of myself. So good for you, Becky. Totally rock it. And the great thing about sketchbooks, well, any of your art that you make, you don't have to show anybody um, anything, whether it's good or, you know, you're not feeling it's quite as good as you want it to be, still keep it, even if that's the case, because you'll look back and you'll probably be like, oh my gosh, I have some things that I thought were horrible at the time, but I read once that you should never get rid of your sketchbooks and just keep them so you can see your growth. And I look back at them and I'm like, actually, that was pretty good because I don't draw people. Mm, I mostly never draw people. And... I drew um, some people that I like saw in a dream once and I went back to it and I was like, that's not bad. You can totally tell they're people. It doesn't have to look like the person that it was, right? So enjoy your sketchbooks or your journals because oh, so much possibility. I love that feeling. Okay, this one's starting to look a little bit like a landscape to me. So that's interesting. The others aren't quite so much, but who knows by the end of this. Sometimes I wipe off the white because I just want a thin called a veil, just a thin veil of white over to make it look a little foggy. Just a little bit off in the distance or a little dreamy. What to do with this one? Hmm. I don't know. When in doubt, carve some stripes. Alright, 
just needs something more exciting here. <laughs> I don't know that white is that exciting thing, but it's on there now. So let's do that. Don't like that. Try again, Jackie. Mm, don't really like that either, but we'll leave it for now. Actually, we won't. I'm going to go in there with a different tool that has more accuracy. Have these little wooden, I don't even know what they're called, scraper. Let's see what I can do. Maybe I'll just do a little winding. and then a very large winding shape. Sure, why not? to make some dots with the back of this scraper. <laughs> the first one worked and gave me a very false sense of success here. Well, it's definitely not too contrived because I can't even keep it the same. back. So I'm really still liking these a lot. I'm going to get my other box of collage paper. <clears throat> I tend to keep two boxes. The one on the right has bigger scraps in general, and this one has smaller scraps. Some of these things obviously are in the wrong places. gives me a general sense of where I want to put things. This is tape that I took off a different section when I was taping off a different piece of um, a different sketchbook page. That's kind of cool. All right, I'm gonna dry this some more. Watch your volume, guys. Sorry. So even though this is tape, it's old tape, 
But even if it was fresh tape, you're still gonna wanna use some sort of medium or gel to stick it down. Otherwise, it will at some point peel off and then you'll be really stuck because all the layers of paint and everything else above it will also peel off. <laughs> Ask me how I know this. Try to give you guys the best advice I can with all of the mistakes that I've made. Because I've benefited from all of the mistakes that other people have made before me that have shared it. Oh, found some white paint back here. Becky, do you have a plan with your sketchbooks? You don't need to. I didn't know if you bought them for any particular project or just to play around in. Mine are mostly just to play around in. Sometimes I start with a theme and think, I'm gonna do 30 pages of three by three inch tiny paintings and then I'll get five in, and then I'll totally change my mind. I try to stick with one thing, but I'm sure I am at least moderately uh, ADHD, so I tend to change my mind quite a bit. Just to explore, that's the best, it's the best. And you have no rules, and you get to do something new every page. Love it. All right, I like those colors together. That was nice, thank you, collage box. I knew there was a reason I kept that tape. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can find some more magical things. This is interesting because the colors actually kind of line up with those. I want all of those colors, but it might help me tie them together if I put them in a different one. Maybe this one. This one needs something. This is a piece of my butcher paper that I keep underneath here on top of my desk. And then I cut it up and try to save some of it because it gives me interesting color combinations that I would not have used like this page. I've noticed myself work that I work around the edges a lot. I haven't decided if that's good or bad, but just noticed it. And actually, I'm not sure it would be either good or bad. It's just interesting when you tend to notice patterns in your own work. Oh, thank you for letting me know. Is it still out of focus, Becky? Let's see. All right, let me know if it's back in focus. Hopefully it was just a buffering issue where when I was holding these up, it might have picked a different focal point. Keep my hands out for a second. Hopefully that will resolve itself. In the meantime, I'll pick some of this. I have all my medium still blurry. Shoot. Hmm. What can I do to solve this? What if I hold this up like this? Maybe it will focus on this. And then if I put it down, did that help at all? I 
of the annoying things is that once I hit live, I'm unable to focus. Huh, I wonder what happened. If I can zoom in. Oh, I can zoom in. All right, did that help with anything? So I can zoom, I just can't make it go into focus. Oh, okay, <laughs> good, good. Then hopefully it was a connection issue. Did anyone else have that issue? Thank you for checking. That was a good, good troubleshooting, Becky. Thank you, Anne. All right, well, now you're a little bit zoomed in, so maybe that's helpful. I don't know what to do with this one. I'm not sure why. I don't know. I'm just going to put this on because I don't know what else to do with it. So hopefully this will give me something to work with. I know this paper looks a bit of a mess. Because it's so jumbled, but that's kind of what I like about it. Just don't want it to be too jumbled. Okay, so I think I'm going to add these. Which will definitely make a bold change here. Can't decide. I like this because it's a little bit more subtle. I like this because it's a bit more bold. So I think I'm just going to tear this so that I have less control over the shape that it is. And I like that better. With the tissue paper, if it goes over black, you lose some of the um, just the dark value because it gets a little bit lighter. As you can see right there, it's a little bit of a filter there. So by tearing it, at least I get to preserve some of this really dark black over here. Very happy with that. All right, well this one, I like a lot. So I'm gonna put that one up here. This one is now my problem child. <laughs> Still my problem child. I don't remember what it, what it started out like. I need to I guess I want to change that a bit. Perhaps with this.
One of the things I think that I don't like about this one, or that is unresolved for me about this one, is that there's a lot of mid values here and a lot of light, but there's not, the black is kind of speckled in, so it's not a firm black where it gr is grounding this piece. Hmm. So now I've switched from messing around mode to problem solving mode. Not really intentionally. Don't think I like that. Hmm. Ooh, I like that. Let's try that. Unexpected. No. question here is do I want to desaturate these things further? This one still I need more black so I'm going to use some black paint. And I'm going to use it with what tool? I'm going to use my brayer. Here I'm just mimicking these other scratch marks, or tally marks. All right, I'm gonna get out some crayons now. So this one I like, it needs more. I'm going to add some of this, this is a yellow ochre Neocolor 1 crayon, so it is not water soluble. Too. 
Don't love that, but that's okay. from my kind of wiped off brayer. I wanted to see what it would look like. It's not really dark enough to be meaningful, but it's already dry, so it's gonna stay. All right, well, these two I like. So I'm gonna call these two done for the most part. Maybe I'll add a little bit of quinacridone gold just to warm some areas up a little bit more. Add a bit more depth to Almost done with this one. It needs something. I think it needs some black. And you know what? Maybe it needs some of this. I'm going to try that and get this gold dried. So, one moment. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but whenever I turn the hairdryer on, all of the small pieces of collage go flying. Um, let's see. That's interesting. I'll take interesting. Never have to line collage up, but I like to for whatever reason. But once you get the matte medium on, it gets harder to do it well.
Okay, so I like that that gave it a little bit more of a focal point. Not really sure what to do down here yet. And this guy is still unresolved in my mind. Let's try one more thing and then if that doesn't work, I'll call it for today. Let's see if I can get this done. I'm looking to see what I have. No. Do I have any good white tissue paper collage? that on it. A little paint swatch. I don't know. <laughs> Stay tuned. If I get this one resolved, I'll post it um, on Instagram. But other than that, this is the group. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much. Um, Becky, have a great time with your sketchbooks and journals. I hope you have a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, everybody. This will be up. I'll, I'll save the session up uh, probably later this afternoon. It'll be online. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time.